Uh, today we want to discuss uh, Christians are moral monsters. Moral monsters sounds like an oxymoron. How can you be moral yet be a monster at the same time? Well, we're going to get into that. I want to open up with Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 8. Who's reading for me? Officer Leon. Officer Leon, thank you. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 8. Uh -huh. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment. If you see the perverting of the poor and violent perverting of judgment. Go ahead. And justice uh -huh. in a province. Marvel not at the matter. The Lord said, don't marvel. Don't be shocked. Go ahead. For he that is higher than the highest regardeth. The and, Lord. There, Go ahead. and there be higher than they. So the Lord is the one that will regard such matters. So the oppression that is done to our people and the violent perversion of judgment, as we see day in and day out on the news, and we truly have no power, but the Lord is higher than we. Give me Deuteronomy 28, 29. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Go ahead. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. The prophecy says, and the Israelites shall not prosper in their ways. Give me the precept for that. Deuteronomy 28, 29. Give me the precept for it in uh, Isaiah 59, 10. Write that down. Isaiah 59, 10 is the precept for Deuteronomy 28, 29. What does it mean? We're like blind people groping at noonday. The book of Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 10. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope for the wall like the blind. Go ahead. And we grope as if we had no eyes. And we grope as if we have no eyes. Meaning, what does that mean? We see all the injustices in the world, especially and particularly upon our people. We see it, but we will not return to the true author, author of justice, which is the most high. We will grope along the wall and say, maybe I can feel my way for democracy. Maybe that will help me. Uh, can somebody lead me to the white image of Jesus? And we grope and ask for help to be taken there. Read again, Officer Liam. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope on the wall like the blind. Go ahead. And we grope as if we had no eyes. And we act like we got no eyeballs. But the Lord is saying we got eyes to see. But we are spiritually blind. That's really the blindness he's talking about. We are spiritually blind. Go ahead. We stumble at noonday as in the night. You see that? We stumble. And at noonday, the sun is, y'all heard the term high noon? The sun is fully bright. It's right above you. you uh, the, your shadow is a circle around your feet. That's how high the sun is, right above you. Very little shadows. But we act like we're blind. So the Bible's talking about us being spiritually blind. Read that part again. We stumble at noonday as in the night. Go ahead. We are in desolate places as dead men. We are in desolate places like dead men. Go back to Deuteronomy. We're going to come back to this chapter later on. It's a heavy chapter. Read again Deuteronomy 28 and verse, 29. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Right. Why is he comparing us to the blind? Because we are spiritually blind. We see all the injustices in the world, but we will not have the sight to return to the one true God. We will look for democracy. We will look for Christianity. We will look for anything outside of what this Bible says. Go ahead. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. And because of this, the Bible says we will not prosper in our ways. We will not. Give me 2 Ezra 12. 2 Ezra. So I know some of you thinking, but no, 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 no. Some of us do prosper. Look at Oprah. Look at Floyd. They're not prospering in their ways, and I'm going to explain why. You never rise above the status of your people. Oprah have given, has given testimony, has gone to France, Paris, other European countries, and they slammed the door in her face, saying no niggas allowed. 
but she's prospering. But I'm Oprah Winfrey. We, they said, we don't care what kind of nooker you are. But I'm the richest black woman on earth. We don't care what kind of nooker you are. So our people, we look, oh, oh look. <laughs> so the prosperity the Bible's talking about is not what you and I might be thinking. It's two different things. So that's why the Lord said we must be born again. God said, your thoughts ain't my thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Read that for me, Captain. I mean, Officer Leon. What verse you want it? Second Ezra 12 and? Uh, 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Good old America. Everyone, oh, God bless all America. Watch. Watch what the Bible says. Second Ezra chapter 12, verse 10. And he said unto me, this is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which has is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore now I declare it unto thee. Now we've touched on this before, but I know that there's some new brothers and new sisters in here. I'm going to show you what it means when it says, um, the eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded. The key we want, but it was not expounded unto him. Give me Daniel 7. Pay attention. Pay close attention. Daniel 7. We want, what do I want? I want verse 7 and verse 19. Those are the key points I want. But let me, let me look first. Before we start reading, go to Leon. Mm -hmm. Daniel. Daniel 7. Let me look at it. Yeah. Start at verse 2. Daniel chapter 7 verse 2. Here we go. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. The great sea is the Mediterranean. Read. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The four great beasts are representing the four great empires upon earth. Read. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. This was the Babylonian captivity under Nebuchadnezzar. Read. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked, uh -huh. and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, uh -huh. and a man's heart was given to it. Meaning great wisdom. Read. And behold, another beast a second like to a bear. This represents the Persian Mede captivity. Go ahead. And it raised up itself on one side. Because the Persian captivity became greater than the Medo captivity. Go ahead. It was a dual uh, empire. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between it the teeth of it. The three ribs is talking about three empires. Hold that real quick. Give me Isaiah 45. You know what verse I want? Because yes, I don't. But I know it's there. <laughs> this is going to explain the three empires what the three ribs were that the Persians and Medes had in their mouth Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 14 thus saith the Lord the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians Egypt Ethiopia and Sabia is that that's what you read right yes sir read it again thus saith the Lord the labor of Egypt and merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee in chains, they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplication unto thee, saying, There is none else, there is no God. Read verse 1. Isaiah 45 and verse 1. Here's the proof. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus. Because the Lord anointed Cyrus, the Persian king, to reign. That's all I want. Go back to Daniel. Daniel so I hope y'all following along. I know I'm going quick. We'll go slow another day. Daniel right. chapter 7, verse 6. After this, I behold, excuse me, verse 5. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and it raised up itself on one side. This was the Persian meat captivity. Go ahead. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. So this empire crushed Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sabia. Go ahead. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. 
Gelb. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard. The next empire was the Greek empire. That's what this leopard represents. Go ahead. Which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Uh-huh. In four groups of military was divided. Go ahead. The beast, or, the beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. You had Seleucus, you had Lysimachus, Cassander, and Ptolemy. I'm going to say it again. Seleucus, Lysimachus, Cassander, and Ptolemy. Go ahead. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast. Now, this is where we wanted to get to, this fourth beast. Go ahead. Dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. So if you notice, the animal symbol was not attributed to Daniel. You read above it, talks about the, the lion that had eagle's wings. You read about the bear, which represented Persia, media. And you read about the leopard symbol. But this fourth empire, which is Rome... It does not give you their animal symbol. Go back to 2nd Ezra now. This is why the Lord said precept must be upon precept. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. 2nd Ezra chapter 12 verse 11. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. So now, so the symbolism is the eagle. Rome is the beginning of the United States of America. Let me word it this way. The United States of America is an extension of ancient Rome. Go to the 11th chapter. I want verse 39 and 40. Second Ezra chapter 11, verse 39. Go ahead. Art not thou... If that remainest of the four beasts who I made to reign in my world. So again, the four beasts we read in Daniel 7. You had the lion that had eagle's wings, which represented the Babylonian captivity. Followed by the bear that lifted up itself on one side, which was the Persian Mede captivity. Followed by the leopard that had four heads, which represented the Greek empire. Okay. Then in Daniel 7, it mentioned a dreadful beast. But it never gave the animal symbol. The next chapter tells you it's the eagle, which is Rome, followed by the United States of America. So now, verse 38 again. Are not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them? So the end of time is going to come through them. Read. And the fourth came. And the fourth came, which what was the symbol, brothers? The eagle. Now, Rome has already fallen in this time, so we know it's not talking about Rome now. It's extending itself in its understanding towards America. Watch. Read again. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness. So I know y'all think that America is a loving country to all nations. Let me tell y'all something. America gives us all here in America censored news Europe and other nations called Americans the dumbest people on earth because we are uh, uh, we live in a bubble we don't uh, we are unaware like what remember we went over how Obama dropped seven bombs on seven nations and Americans didn't know they did a survey they went around and said what nations is America currently at war at war with us on the news nobody knew they were like we're, we're not at war. America's not at war Yes, America's at war with seven nations. They dropped the bomb on seven countries. So we get censored. The CNN, which is the Caucasian News Network, gives us censored news. Abbreviated news filtered with lies. Fake news. Fake, oh, yeah. Fake news, as uh, your president says. Fake news. Read that again, Officer Leon. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past. And had power over the world with great fearfulness. Notice this, and had power over the world with great fearfulness. You don't do what we say, we will drop a bomb on you. Go ahead. And over the whole compass of the earth. See that? And over the whole compass of the earth. Go ahead. 
with much wicked oppression. Do you see what God is saying? With much wicked oppression. This is not our words. This is the words of God Almighty. Go ahead. And so a long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. With what? Deceit. With what? With deceit. Oh, I thought this was a God-fearing country. God bless America. No! Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Get mad now. Y'all get mad. It's all right. Pull up. Uh, now, who's controlling my videos? Pull up Philando Castile. I just want what uh, Michael, Jordan Michael, I forgot his name, the actor. Yeah, him. Michael B. Jordan. No, no, it's a, a picture. I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to see this. Yep, that's it right there. Now, Michael B. Jordan is a famous actor. I want y'all to see what he wrote. He wrote, this was on Facebook. He wrote, they want us to feel helpless, and right now I feel it. How do we unify? How do we turn? What do we do? How do we fight? How do we stand? I don't have the answers, but I know I'm going to be a part of the change, and not just today, every day until we see real change. I am Philando. So now he put this together, or maybe, maybe, maybe he did or he didn't, I don't know. Maybe it's Valerie Castillo, but this is what she wrote for the, our people who had no convictions. She started with uh, Philando Castile because it was uh, a not guilty for the officer that murdered him. Uh, Trayvon Martin, no conviction. Sandra Bland, no conviction. Katherine Johnston, no conviction. Sean Bell, no conviction. Now, Later on, not today, but one day I'm going to tell you all about Sean Bell. Because the officers involved in that, I knew them. And the sergeant on the scene, I knew the guy. But I won't say nothing today. I'll tell you either offline or later on. Uh, what was I reading? Sean Bell, no conviction. Eric Gardner, no conviction. Rikia Boyd, no conviction. Amadou Diallo, no conviction. Mike Brown, no conviction. Kamani Gray, no conviction. Kenneth Chamberlain, no conviction. Tavares McGill, no conviction. Tamir Rice, no conviction. Uh, Ayana Stanley Jones, no conviction. Fetty Gray, no conviction. Well, alrighty then. Well, alrighty then. Our people, we blame the police for their murder, which justifiably so. But in Babylon, let me explain something to you about Babylon. This is an interconnecting system. Give me a, do me a favor, pull up the eugenics tree. Let me tell you some of black people and Latin people. This is what we do. The police is one faction of this system. Those who have committed the crime, yes, they should pay. I'm not trying to absolve the police. And I'll tell you, you got some police officers who should not be police, meaning they are fearful when they approach blacks and Latinos. They are fearful. And you and the ones that are often fearful, like blacks and Latino officers, are those that identify white. What I mean by that? Those that identify with white society. Meaning they talk like this man and they go, yeah, man, you know. I don't know what's going on, dude. Everything, something's wrong. Those are the ones who will shoot you out of fear. They don't connect with the people at all. Now, so what, what we have to do as teachers, remember, don't put a, do all black people steal? Do all Puerto Ricans carry knives? Well, then again, no. No. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> my, my point is this. Don't make a broad brush stroke on everything. Don't make a broad, you understand what I mean? If, I don't, if you don't understand, say you don't understand. I do understand. So. Okay. All right, so we, we look at, the, so this will help us in our teaching. The eugenics tree, which eugenics means what, brothers? Y'all know what that means? Good birth, good birth. This is a tree which is white domination meant on expunge, expunge, is that the word? Expunge, is that how you pronounce it? Expulge? Yeah, whatever the daggone word is. Listen, I'm black, damn it. Anyway. 
Y'all know what I'm trying to say. This tree is meant to, oh, I'll use the word another word, extinguish. I like that word. Blacks and Latinos. And they do it by various means. They use anatomy, biology, physiology, genetics, physiology, psychology, mental testing, anthro... What's that word? That says anthropometry, right? History, geology, anthropology, archaeology, ethnology, geography, law, statistics, politics, economics, biography, genealogy, education, sociology, religion, psychiatry, surgery, medicine. Now, we often look at law, right? What is the education? Yeah, right down there, education. All these things are in unison to squeeze the life out of us, to destroy us. We often look at law, and we think of law, we only tend to think of the police. That's just one branch. The police is simply one branch. Get, let's get some understanding. Go back to Philando Castile. Give me back that picture. Do y'all see where all those names say no convictions? Are the police the ones that say no conviction? No. There are two groups. There are two types of trials. Who know what they are? Two, tri two types of trials. Help me. You can have a jury, a trial by jury, or a trial by a judge only. Those are the only two, judge or jury. Many times police officers uh, tend to go with the judge feeling that the judge will be partial towards them. But sometimes they tend to go towards a jury trial. Now, some of these things, like Philando Castile, his, he had a jury trial. And oftentimes juries are some of the dumbest people you will ever come across. All these, these convictions are juries. Most of them, I, don't, I, I didn't look at all of them, but most of them are judged by juries, meaning 12 of their quote-unquote peers. Has, they had nothing to do with the police. These are 12 civilians. Y'all know you get the letter in the mail, come for jury duty. How I many y'all get that letter, right? You know, we always ignore it. We ain't supposed to, but we often. I said, they don't want me on a jury. It'd be hell and high water. But anyway... You get 12 civilians, and those are the ones who say, no conviction, no conviction, no conviction, no conviction, no conviction, no conviction, no conviction. That's separate from the police. But we will march and say, it's the police. Look at how black people do. We say, it's the police that gave no conviction. No, dumb Negro, it was not the police that gave no conviction. It was 12 of the dumbest Americans they could find. That's who gave no conviction. But nobody talks about that. They will just point at the, the police. Now, the police are guilty of those that have done the crime. I'm not absolving them. But remember, the juries are just as culpable. The one with Philando Castile. Remember, the officer was Latino. But like I said, many of our people white identify. Meaning our mindset, we think many police officers, I won't say all, I won't do a broad, but there are many who think like Esau. When they give you the psychological exam, they want to see where your thoughts are. Yes. There's a movie with Gene Hackman. I forgot what it's called. It might be called The Jury. Where they, they pick people, they check their background to see if you had any prejudice, prejudices against any... Whatever the case, like, like if it's a murder, is anybody in family get murdered? They ask little things like that. But what I was looking for in the, in the book of Numbers, we had, the Lord set up something called a city of refuge. Where if you accidentally killed someone, their family had the right to put you and judge you with death. It was the, your, the family of the victim. That's how God set it up. Not any old person on the side. You, let's say you kill somebody in Laba's family by accident. Someone in his family had to chase your body. You had to try. Now, you know you did it by accident. You had to try to run. To, there were six cities of refuge. You had to try to get to them. The law was, if his family members caught you before you got into that city, that was justice. That was judgment. You got caught. Hey, you couldn't run. You was overweight. Sorry. Shame on you. <laughs>
you tripped when they was chasing you? Oh, well. Now, if you managed to get in there, you had to stay in that city until the high priest died. It's in the book of Numbers. It's in the book of Numbers. Where is it? Y'all write that Numbers 35. Y'all can read it on your own. Read the whole chapter. So, we make, now I, make, I, named, uh, I named the class Moral Monsters for a reason. We make moral appeals to an immoral people. I'm going to say it again. We make moral appeals to an immoral people. Esau, although he likes to set himself up as the uh, epitome of morality, when you examine him, his history, is he really moral? He's a monster. Christians. Look, Christianity is the world's bloodiest religion. Yet we cry to them for justice. No justice. No peace. You will, we will not get justice under a moral monster. And I call him a moral monster because he esteemed, He lifts up the Bible and says he believes in Jesus. He believes in the laws of God. But he throws the Bible behind his back and does contrary. So he is a moral monster. Okay. Edom esteems itself as a Christian society, America. But when we check their history, their history is a bloody history. Give me Isaiah 32 and 8. They have always had a bloody history, but in God we trust, they say. Hence the term moral monsters, because they say in God we trust. Isaiah 32 and 8, I think that's the verse I want. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 8. But the liberal deviseth liberal things. And by liberal things shall he stand. Uh -huh. Rise up, ye women. It might be before. Verse that. 5. Okay, thank you. Verse 5. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. You know what a liberal person is? Someone that, uh, that feels for blacks and let I feel your pain. And they may give money to black people like the United Negro College Fund. They will donate money. But the Bible says, read that again. The vile person. The Bible calls them vile. The vile person shall what? Shall be no more called liberal. Because we throw that term liberal around, in, especially on the news. They're liberals. They feel the plight of black people. Like the white woman that was giving money to uh, the Panthers. She was a liberal. White people that want to help black and Latin causes, those are liberals. But the Bible says they are vile. Why? Because on the surface, it appears as if they want to help. They mean, them giving you money means nothing. But behind the scenes, they're doing contrary wickedness. That's what the Lord is saying. Okay, read that again. The vile person shall be no more called liberal. Go ahead. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. Meaning rude. Nor the churl said to be bountiful. Because they have lots of money. Lots of Federal Reserve notes that they can throw around at you. Go ahead. For the vile person will speak villainy. See that? The vile person will speak villainy. They won't speak it in the forefront, but behind the scenes and no think tanks. I gave him money. I gave that group X amount of money, but let's do this. They're the ones behind such things as rap music. I love black people. I love black and Latin music. Let's, let's support their music. Here's a hundred million dollars. Here's a million dollars for your music. But we only want you to rap about blood, murder, chaos to your people. Can you do that? All right, my man, my man. That's villainy. Go ahead. For the vile person will speak villainy, and his heart will work iniquity. And his heart, meaning his mind, will work iniquity, meaning sin. Was that it, officer? To practice hypocrisy. You see that? The Bible says liberals practice hypocrisy. They do or say one thing and do another. That's what the Bible is revealing it. And to utter error against the Lord. See that? To utter error by the Lord. Like George Soros. He's a liberal. He has donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to the Black Lives Matter. And he has set them up in homes and houses. And he has the LGBTQ. Lust guarantees a booty tragedy quickly. That's what it stands for. That's the hypocrisy. That is the villainy. Give me Habakkuk 2 and 4. I know some of our people think they can change moral monsters, especially the black woman. 
I'm going to marry him and sex him, that white man. I'm going to change him. Then we get the, you see the articles about he calls me nigger when we have sex. Remember those articles? Articles and letters sent to us talking about some, listen, don't tell us to leave him, but I just want to complain about him. Right. <laughs> That's what happened. Then you got the black man. I just want to marry Miss Ann. I could change her. You know, the, the white woman has always supported the white man. This is what we fail to realize. Look at the pictures of the slave lynchings. You will see the white woman cheering yep. the death of our people. But I know, brother, you can change her. Read that for me. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. God created him. God created them to have a spirit that is not upright. But you think you can undo and change what God created. The Lord said he created them not right. But you're saying, I can make a crooked thing straight. You're an idiot. You're foolish. But he gave me money, you fool. He gave me money. Give me Sirach 12. You will meet. Edomites, Chris, alleged Christians, who will do nice things for you. Like to show uh, uh, houses. What is it when they make you a house? What's the name of that show? Home Improvement. Yeah. No. Who? Home Improvement. Huh? Home Invasion. No, it's not a home invasion. That's a crime. What is it? Home makeovers. Some of them, they make you a whole house. And these black, all black people that they do this for are are of head and they sunk, they, they sink. They're gone. They're in a sinkhole. Because now the white man can do no wrong to them. But let me tell you what the Bible, once the Lord tells us his soul is not upright, you need to etch that in your brain. But, so when the white man or white woman comes and says something nice to you, or does something nice and kind for you, remember this scripture right here. Read that. Sirach chapter 12 and verse 10. Never Trust thine enemy, mm. for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. When you got a piece of iron, it will surely rust in time. The Bible says Esau's wickedness is just like that. It might look good today. It might be supportive, like a piece of iron may support this building. But give it time. That iron will rust and his wickedness will appear. That's what God is saying about his creation. Go ahead. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Mm. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. Do you hear what the Lord is saying here? Take good heed. But you know how people, no, 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 no. The Lord don't know what he's talking about. He wrong. But he created him. No, but he wrong. They gave me welfare. They gave me section A. What you niggas got? Mm -hmm. They gave me a place to live. They <laughs> gave me sneakers. <laughs> That's the snake and natural born killers, which you just read there. Read that again. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's Though he humble himself. Though the snake comes up to you all nice. And go crouching. And it goes nice and smooth. I'm, I'm a nice snake. <laughs> Yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou had wiped a looking glass. Mm. And thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away. You see that? When he bites your behind, you up there looking at him, talking, but I thought you was nice. Yep. Then he looked at you and said, you know the words. You knew I was a snake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to have the mindset. You got to know that they, God has called them your enemies from the beginning. Your mindset should be, hi, my name's Raheem, and I'm coming for the job paying $100,000. Well, Raheem, I really like you, and I like you too. You've got the job. Thank you, Miss Ann. You know she's the devil, right? Thank you. Your mindset got to be, this is the devil. I don't care how much money they give you. I don't care how many homes they build for you. Always have in your mind that scripture. Keep that in your mind. Because we got to go out in the world and we got to smile at them. How you doing? Believe it, Esau does it with you. Hi, Raheem. How's the family? Nigga, how you doing? Esau does it all the time. We better learn. We better learn. <laughs> so, give me Psalms 94. 
Y'all know your beard working on white people be smiling in your face about how you doing. You know they don't care. And they always try to get it, to, they always try to get their way to your house. You mind if I come over and stop? You know why they, they want to see how you live, what you're doing in your house. But they don't invite you over to their house. You always want to introduce some Edomite man to your sister. I can't stand nookers that do that. Because Esau will not bring you brothers to meet his sister. You ain't going to find that. Unless it's, oh, 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 trailer trash. The only time Esau's with us is when they are trailer trash. Understand that. Believe it or not. Just check it out. Go to Kentucky. All them white people be around black people because they trailer trash. They broke. <laughs> they ain't got a dime, a pot to piss in, or a window to throw it out of. So they want to hang around us now. Even then, they're not loving you. That's, that's all scheme. That's all that is. The, take that sucker for what he's got. That's what exactly. that's all about. Exactly. Read that for me, officer. What verse you want? Uh, nine, Psalms 94, 16. Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Now, somebody, oh, you're so red. No, I'm not talking racism at all. I'm talking real. I'm keeping it real, brothers and sisters. I'm keeping it real. I ain't saying go out there and kill nobody, hurt nobody. You better go out there and smile. You better go out there and compliment the white man and his woman and their baby. But don't trust them. But don't trust them. That's what I'm saying. And believe me, these Israelites you see on YouTube about death, death, don't fall for that. They, some of them got jobs and they be in restaurants. Some of them are waiters. <laughs> How are you, sir? Would you like some tea, sir? <laughs> then they get on YouTube talking about, I hate the white man, death, death, death. And got a white woman in the closet. Yeah, and a white woman in the closet. Don't be falling for that talk, tough talk. Yeah, they got a white woman on a leash in the closet. Psalms talk about black snake moan. I'm sorry. Read that for me. Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Go ahead. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? And that's the question. Who will rise up for me? The me there is the most high. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Our minds, the, the mindset of blacks and Latinos is that the Lord is going to come back and do what he's going to do. The Lord ain't doing nothing until we take a step first. Understand that. Like that old worldly expression, because it ain't the scripture. God helps those that help. I can't quote it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. God helps those that help themselves. Y'all heard you. that before. Thank you. But our people want to sit back and let the Lord deal with it. No. The Bible says, read it again, officer. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? And he ain't talking about physically. He's talking about with his word, with his scriptures. Go ahead. Oh, who will stand up for me Against the workers of iniquity. That is the question. Go ahead. Unless the Lord had been my help. Another example. I got to talk about our friend, our friend, Colin Kaepernick. Now, I know I give you mulatto brothers a hard time. You have breed. I'm sorry. Y'all getting mad. Don't get mad at me. Y'all ain't, y'all, y'all mulatto. I give you a hard time because a lot of you be confused. Not y'all up in here. But the ones you meet in the world are confused. I don't know where I fit in. Am I black? Am I white? I don't know. What am I? I can't stand them. I can't stand them. Make me, I just want to smack the hell out of you. Your nose is wide as this table. You want to know what you are. <laughs> Hair is kinky. As, you, you can't get a comb through it. Like, I don't know what I am. Nigga, please. <laughs> but anyway, Colin Kaepernick, now he's, he's a mulatto. But he has taken a stand or a knee for black people. He said, this police brutality got to stop. He took a knee. He said, I'm not standing for the national anthem. I'm not going to do it. And black people cheer, applaud, applaud, applaud. So now nobody want to pick up Colin pa Kaepernick because of that. So he said, all right, I'll, I'll, I'm quitting the NFL. I'm, quit I'm out. Standing up for black people sometimes can be a dangerous thing. Will those same black people that he stood for, will they... Uh, help me out with some words. So I say the right will they, thing. Will they back him? Will they support him? Will they support him by not supporting the NFL? Will they refuse to watch? When does the football games come on? September to February. Will they stop work watching that? Will they stop paying for tickets? Will they stop buying the paraphernalia? You asking a real question there. Yeah. You got to keep it real with a Absolutely. Negro. This brother put his job on the line for black people. That's why I'm going to You know the story I told you my boss said? I had a boss, a lieutenant. He's watching our videos, and he says, Israel, he's Jamaican. Y'all get on my nerves, too, but it's all right. I love you. He goes, come in my office. 
He said, now, I don't know how you get away with saying it's the S-H you be saying. He said, and I said, you believe what I'm saying? You believe the scripture? He said, I believe it, but I will never join you. I said, why do you say that? He said, if I join Israel United in Christ and I lose my job, I guarantee you, none of you will support me because that's how y'all roll. That's how black people get down. They don't support nobody. Did y'all hear that? Then he said, he said, look at Malcolm X family. He said, his family is destitute. He went deep on me. And I had to agree with him. I said, you know what, you're right. He said, look at Malcolm X family. The man got assassinated. Who supported Betty Shabazz and the children? He said, not one nigga. That's what he said. I'm just quoting. Don't get mad at me. I'm just quoting. He, he, he's Benjamin, so he just he let just, it out. Yeah. He had an accent. I, can't, I don't want to do his accent. They get, Benjamin get mad when I try to do the accent. <laughs> he goes, look at Marcus Garvey. The dude got exiled. Who stood behind him and his family? He said, not one black person. He said, I will never join you because of that. So I, I thought about stag. I said, that's some real stuff right there. Now, you might be saying, what about Martin Luther King Jr.? His family's doing all right. Why is Martin Luther King family doing good? White man money. White man came behind Martin Luther King and gave his family money. One of his daughters was in Congress. Okay? His family is well, t- one of his sons too. Doing, they doing very, that's because Esau behind them. Black people, we don't support nobody. We be the ones, we, you, yeah, go over there. Stand, well, there's a scripture that says, in Sirach, that says they'll tell you to go in the front and then they'll wait to see what happens. And when things go bad, they like this. That's our people. They say, you're on your own, man. That's it. That's you. <laughs> you know, we, Bishop, it's funny you just said it because we yeah. use a similar Sirach. example going the exact same way we was in camp. This was during the time where the Trayvon Martin decision came down. And everybody was mad with the with the wearing the hoods and all that. Liam, you remember? The, the, everybody was protesting, angry about the about the verdict. And I remember, and I said, "Well, if you're so angry, come Christmas time, y'all stay out of the store. Just Christmas, take take all of the money that you would spend on Christmas, and say we're gonna keep it in our pockets just because of that verdict." You know what happened then? Nobody wanted to listen to nothing. Are they still shopping on Christmas? Yes. When they do the count of, for how much money we spend on the holidays, the so-called black dollar surpasses everybody else's dollar. But yet, we were so upset with the verdicts and all of that. So if you really wanted to make a statement, you should have made it then, just like with the point that you're bringing. These brothers get kicked, get canned and, and, and murdered and all of that. You really mean to stand for them? Keep your dollars in your pocket. Support, support the brothers that supported you. That's right. Yeah, uh, uh, brother y'all saw, even though with us that that travel they be able to bring the gospel to our people but the same brothers who chilling out they'll say hey yeah they're y'all better doing a good work it's the brother who don't support the booster club you see what i'm saying to you a little booster club you can put a dollar three four dollars in it they're showing you where your mind at because you only care about yourself because the booster club should have all iuic member in it you know why because you all know what the mission is but what i heard 49, 50 brothers sign in. They're showing you y'all a bunch of, I, I, I'm not going to say it, but. <laughs> Get, um, did you finish it over, Sir Liam? They'll shop on Christmas. They'll be, they'll be the ones sending uh, emails talking about, is it wrong to keep Christmas? And they'll have been in here for a year. Where we at? We, that we was in Psalms. You wanted the scripture about verse. brothers who hide. Psalms 94, 16. Go ahead. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Uh-huh. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. So the Lord has always had our back. This is the reason why we're not dead. Some of you think we're not dead because of Martin Luther King Jr. Y'all simple as hell. You know that this white man, he has poisoned the water of Flint, Michigan, and D.C. And many of young blacks and Latinos that live in D.C. and Flint, Michigan have... uh, uh, what is it called? Lead poisoning and all of that? This man could poison all. He could wipe us out. But it's the Lord that is holding him back. Read that verse again. I want this to get in your heads. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Y'all see that meaning death. My soul almost died. It is the Lord that's keeping this man at bay from wiping us off the face of the earth. Okay. Understand that. Read. And notice, notice, how come these black entertainers, they get on my nerves too, 
With all this money, nobody is, is well, I won't say nobody. They, if you're doing things behind the scenes, all right. But there comes a time when you got to, Psalms 94, 16 again, please. You got to. Who will rise up for me against the evil doers? Our sons and daughters are being poisoned through the water. And nobody says nothing. Nobody makes a song or nothing for to donate the, the proceeds to go to Flint, Michigan or D.C. Nobody. Not one black entertainer. You just cracked the earth with that statement. Just, just meditate on what he just said. All the entertainers with their million dollar record deals, with their television movie deals and all of that, you mean to tell me nobody thought about trying to rectify those situations there? Ain't that something? Put a record out, something. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's, that's why we, uh, I got to limit my words so we don't get in trouble. We don't. No, I didn't make a, a deal with the Illuminati. So, oh, you made a deal with the Illuminati? Shut up. Read on. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had You know, you got to limit your word because sometimes you want to drop an F-bomb, but you can't. Sometimes, I'm so mad, what can I say? I'm going to drop an F-bomb. Like that's going to appease the situation. It ain't, but you know at home when you bang your toe and the F-bombs be dropping. <laughs> you feel like you just got to say it. The pain don't go away until you say it. <laughs> your foot be throbbing. You say, I know I need to say one. <laughs> I feel a little better now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Officer Leon. Verse 17. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Go ahead. When I said, my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Right. We almost slipped in this society, meaning when you slip, oftentimes you crack your head. But the Lord has helped us. Come on. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, Thy comforts delight my soul. Because when you th really think about society the way it is, you, it can drive you to madness. Like it says in Deuteronomy 28. Thou shalt be angry. How does it go? You shall be mad for the sight which thou shalt see. But it's, the only comfort we get is what we're reading here. Read that part again. Leon. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. The words of God is the only thing that gives us comfort because we know there is a God and what is going to happen on the earth. Read. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? The throne of, of iniquity is America. The throne of iniquity is America. So it's asking, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Meaning with God. Go ahead. Which frameth mischief by a law. So Esau creates laws that are his laws are only meant to benefit him, but his laws are often trick bags for us, and we end up in the penal system doing 10 years hard time for someone like a brother in Texas stole a TV, got 10 years for stealing a TV. Are you kidding me? This is some crazy stuff, but nobody talk about that. I wonder if Bernie Madoff got that much time. I don't think Enron got that much time. Enron, them guys. <laughs> I'm wondering. I'm just wondering. Maybe, maybe they did, but I don't. I don't know about it. Somebody need to uh, drop us. A They'll give a something. Negro or Puerto Rican. You rob somebody. Hey, here's a TV. Stick them up. Give me your money. They take your wallet. You got twenty five dollars in there. He gets caught. He gets twenty five years or twenty fifteen years. White man Enron stole everyone's pension. They get five seven years. Are you kidding me? You stole these people their life savings, yep. and you got five or seven years, and a dude that stole your wallet with $25, and it got almost 10, 15 years. And the type of jail they go to ain't your type of jail that you go to. Exactly. They go to a hotel. Yeah. They go yeah. to clubhouses. They, they go to, uh, yeah. like, those golf houses and stuff, stuff like that, ranch. Club, uh, club, yeah, club, club fed. fed, club <laughs> med, right? Yeah, but, Bishop, you're talking about the black man. He, he destroy one. They give him five to 15 years. The white men destroy with a S. Many family. Yes. They depend on that. They have to go back to work. He only have five, seven years. Mm -hmm. That's some wickedness for you. Exactly. Right? So that's what the script. Read it again, Officer Leon. Shall I'm sorry. Ruben, what, you, you had your hand up? What? Shalom. Um, what you were saying about how wicked Edom is in Essex County, there was a cop who got caught molesting a, five, a middle school student, 
and all they gave him was just five years probation. Right. And he I doesn't read that. have to register as a sex offender. Exactly. Bro. Exactly. But now he was fondling and have the 14 year old girl give him a BJ. Y'all know what a BJ is. He got pro five year probation. No jail to probation. He got probation. You will sex you will have sex with the local hooker, you know the local hoe, the jump off queen in the projects, and she'll be 16. You be you get five years, and then when you get out, you gotta register as a sex offender. And brothers have been in court crying, but I'm not the only one that slept with her. All these dudes in the project slept with her, and they go, but you're the only one that got caught. That's how they justify it. And she is the hoe of the projects. Okay. Damn. You be walking with everybody, be going, hey, ho. You think that's her name? <laughs> Where we at, over Selena? Verse 20. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? Uh huh. They like gathered. They, they ended slavery, except if you're committed a crime, like a felony. Then when you go to prison, it's free slave labor. You can work for companies, institutions, for no money. That's a loophole in the law. Go ahead. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. Do y'all see that? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. Go ahead. And condemn the innocent blood. They condemn the innocent blood. That's what they do. That's why, if you notice, what does Esau do? Soon as you are put to death, one of our people put to death, they do a search for your criminal history to try to justify it. And if you didn't commit a crime... They go to your family. Did his family commit anything? Like with Philando Castillo, he had never done a crime. So they went to his uh, family and tried to search out who in his family committed a crime and then put that on TV. Are you kidding me? So they condemn the innocent blood. Now this innocent is really going into the righteous, those that repent of their sins. Okay, they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. Read. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge. We got to believe that. We got to understand that thing. Go ahead. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity. The Lord's going to bring upon Esau their own iniquity. That's why, brothers and sisters, just sit back and relax. The Lord, once we drop the word, our job is just teach the word, gather Israel. That's what the Lord commanded us. Hold on. He's the Lord said, I got this. Go ahead, read it again. And, they, and he shall bring upon them their own iniquity. Right. What was their own iniquity? Murder. Devastation. That was the iniquity they did to us. The Lord said, I'm going to return it upon them. Go ahead. And in the book of Revelation, it says, double pay unto her. That's what it says in Revelation 18. Pay her double. Go ahead. And shall cut them off in their own wickedness. That's right. Come on. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. We better believe that. We better honor that thing. The Lord will cut them off. Now, give me Psalms chapter 50. And I'm going to show you all a couple of video clips. So y'all over here, please get ready. I'm going to show you a couple of video clips. These are clean video clips. No X-rated stuff. None of that. Psalms 50, re just read verse 16 for us, Officer Leon. Psalms chapter 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked, God saith, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? Now, the wicked. Many times we will read the Bible and say that the wicked can be anybody, but there is a main wicked in the earth. Give me Malachi 1 for to prove that point. Then, I'm then we're going to go to the videos. I want you to line up uh, covenant promises with God. Line that up. Read that. Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Uh -huh. Whereas Edom, Edom saith. Whereas Edom saith. We are impoverished. We are impoverished. They were impoverished, listen good, during the dark ages. They, listen good. They were not impoverished during the book of Genesis. When you read Genesis 36, it tells you that Esau, Edom, was rich. They were the first dukes on the earth. So it's not talking about that time period. The time period wherein they were impoverished was during the Middle Ages, or some books call it the Dark Ages or Medieval Age. Read that again, Officer Leon. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, 
but we will return and build the desolate places. They did return and build the desolate places. It was during the Renaissance. The Renaissance is when Esau returned. The word Renaissance means rebirth. But no one ever asked the question, rebirth of what? Rebirth of the white man in power in earth. Or let me say it this way. Rebirth of Esau in power in the earth. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build. Esau shall build. But I will throw down. But I, the lights will cut off on the right side of it for some reason. Thank you. Read that again. They shall build. They shall build. But I will throw down. See, the prophecy, God said he's going to throw. That's how you know God is black. Listen to the speech. I'm going to throw down. <laughs> Was that it, obviously? And they shall call them. And they shall call Edom. The border of wickedness. It's the border of wickedness. They are the wicked from beginning to end. But let's see if it's just one person. Right? And the people. Who doesn't say person? The People that includes men, women, boys, and girls against whom the Lord has indignation forever. You know why? Because God created them and he said the soul within them is not upright. He know what he made. You don't believe what he said, so you trust him. <laughs> Go back to where you was at. Psalm chapter 50, verse 16. Uh -huh. But unto the wicked. Now I want you have covenant promises with God video that's not the name that's not the name right there that's what I want uh, bah, bah, bah. read on but unto the wicked God saith what hast thou to do to declare my statutes what hast thou to do to declare my statutes because Esau loves to read out the Bible go ahead or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. So this is going, this verse deals with Esau using the Bible for their benefit. I'm just going to show you the beginning of this. This is an example when it says, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Play the video. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Pause. Being made a curse for us. This is world famous Kenneth Copeland. Some of your mothers send him money every week. My mama used to send this devil money. But go back to the... Now, he's in Galatians 3. This is Esau's favorite book, by the way. Go ahead, play. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now let's pause now. right there. Now you know what I want you to do? I want everybody to go to Galatians 3 and verse 13. Uh, Enoch, I want you to find me some lynchings. Pictures, images, lynchings. Don't X out the video. We're coming right back to the devil. Lynchings. Images, images, images. Right there. You see that one on? Yeah. yeah that's a good one right there. Blow, blow that one up. I want y'all to look. The reason I like this one is because you see Edomite men and Edomite women and children. And you know they got... They got paid off. These, they made these pictures into postcards. Give me the next one. Go back out of that. I, and I, I, I want to show. We, I want this one. But go back out. Go back. I want to show you this one. Give me the woman. Is that a woman top? Oh, that's children. Click that one. I never saw that one. Where'd it go? That ain't it. That ain't it. Right there. Children. Children. I wanted this picture because, correct me if I'm wrong, I'll, you know, I get names mixed up. A sister made a song called Strange Fruit. Was it Billie Holiday? Nina Simone? Don't be messing me up, brother. Okay, Billie Holiday. Uh, she did a song called Strange Fruit, hanging off the uh, tree. And it, the song was about lynchings of our people. That's strange fruit. A tree is supposed to have apples and oranges. 
but you had our people hung on these trees for weeks to put fear in our people. What are you going to say? She, 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 she listen to the lyrics of that song. She says, black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. You got to listen to it. You can smell, you can smell it. You can smell the, the stench. Exactly. So it. the reason I wanted this, brothers, go back to Galatians. Actually, go back to the video. Go back to the video. From the beginning, from the beginning. Show you how these devils don't know the Bible at all, and they twist things. Go ahead. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Stop. So that the cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That was prophetic for not only the crucifixion of Christ because they hung him on a tree. Remember, put up the cross for me, Roman execution. Type in Google Images, Roman execution of the cross. Under Google Images. Google Images. Come on. I want images. This was a form of Roman execution. They hung people on trees. When the Bible says they were hung on a tree, Rome would take trees, put them in the shape of... Uh, crosses or T's and hang Christ was, some Christians think Christ was the only one hung on these trees no when you read the history it said hundreds of thousands of Israelites was hung on trees by Rome and it didn't end there during the south during the time of even after the abolishment of slavery during the time of Jim Crow the black code segregation they were hanging us on trees so officer Liam Galatians 3 and 13 for us again Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Stop right there. What is, brothers, raise your hand. What is the curse of the law? Only five brothers have a clue. Let me hear. I never heard you. You. Yep. You, you, you. Amasai. Amasai? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Deuteronomy 28, um, verses 15 to 68. Ooh, Correct. Curses. Give me that. Deuteronomy 28, 15 to 68. I want just key verses. I want verse 32. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse R Read 15. verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Do me a favor. Go to chapter 27. I think it's the last verse. Deuteronomy but chapter... This is where Christians go. I want, I'm preparing y'all for Christians. 27 verse 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say amen. Now Christians will take you there. Some of them know something. They'll go there. But they never will follow up with the next chapter to show you the judgments for breaking the law. Now go back to Deuteronomy 28, 15 and then jump. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse, give me verse uh, 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. 48. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Verse uh, 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So let's go back to the moral monster, please. Go back to the moral monster. Come on, let's play the video. Mm-hmm. 
This dude is super rich. Creflo Dollar was his student. Go ahead. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, <clears throat> the curse of the law was the curse for breaking now, I'm going to use a little different word here. It's exactly the same thing, and it, and it is used uh, interchangeably. It was the curse for breaking covenant with God in the old covenant. The, the curse, the punishment. Now, he deep. Pause well, right there. He deep. Everybody, oh, he deep. But he has never explained the curse of the Lord yet. He's giving ready Breaking to covenant. microwave everybody's mind with this next statement. I already see it coming. Yeah, go ahead. You stepped out of that covenant protection and the curse just sitting there waiting on you. I mean, the minute you stepped out there, oh man, I mean, the devil just put one on you. You hear this madness? As long as you were over here obeying God, doing what he said and doing things his way, uh, the 112th Psalm says, Blessed is the man who delights greatly in the law of God. Greatly blessed. Greatly blessed. Why? He's in the blessing. He's, he's, he, he's in covenant. He with has God. dazzled Negroes he, now. He takes great pleasure in that covenant. But the moment you get out of it and out of the protection of it, the curse is everywhere. It's, it's there just waiting on you. Now, the difference between the old covenant and the new. never said what the new, curse is yet. The new covenant is between God, the Father, and the resurrected man, Jesus. Amen. Now, get this now. Oh, God, I can't take him. Stop, boys. Oh, God, I can't, I can't take him. Read that again. To Go to Galatians 3. At the, at the Galatians 3, he read something in verse 14. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Verse 14. Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, here's a question about the Gentiles. Who is the Gentiles that the curse of the law came on? Who are these Gentiles? Yes. Now, when you stand up, I got another question. I got a follow up. Go ahead. Shalom, Bishop, Brother Shemariah. Shemariah. Those Gentiles he was making reference to were the Israelites. How do you know that? The history of the Maccabees. Okay, that's good. Give me something else. And let's say the, the person, your answer's right. Let's say the person does not have the Apocrypha. We got to learn to be expert. Come on, come on, what else you got? The precept in John 7, 35. Okay, I like that. Y'all write that down, you new brothers. John 7, read that for us, Officer Liam. I like that. John 7, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we should not find him? Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? So the brother went there to prove that the Israelites that were dispersed were called Gentiles. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, I'm going back to somebody raise your hand. Where, I'm going to give you a hint. Where does it say in the curse of the law we would be Gentiles? Do, 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 do. All right, you right there, brother. Yes. Remember, the discussion is the curse of the law. That's what Paul was talking about. Shalom. Shalom. Uh, it's in Deuteronomy 28, 37. Very good. Read that for us, Officer Leon. And thou, Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. Here's the proof that we were called Gentiles. 
and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword. To become a proverb and a byword, it means you would lose your God-given name. Your identity, your surname would be changed. That's what a proverb and a byword is. Your nationality would be changed. Your surname would be changed. Everything about you would change. Okay. You know what? Let me show you something. Give me Daniel 1 and 8 about the surname. You know what I want? So we touched on the identity when they called the dispersed Israelites Gentiles in John 7.35. But I want the surname now. Is it Daniel 1 and 8 or 1 and 9? Daniel chapter 1 verse 7. Okay. Unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. Read the verse above it. So verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar. And to Hananiah... Now these names, that they're given Babylonian names, which are names in honor of Babylonian gods. Go ahead. And to Hananiah of Shadrach. And, uh, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. So the purpose for changing their names was to change their identity so that they would lose the connection with who they truly are. That's what happened to Daniel. That's what happened to all of us up in here, all of us listening. Give me that next video with our, our friend Malcolm X. We're going to come back to the devil in a second. But let me give Malcolm. Let me give Malcolm. Mr. O'Connor. What is your real name? Malcolm. Malcolm X. Uh, is that your legal name? As far as I'm concerned, it's my legal name. Have you been to court to establish the I don't. I, I didn't have to go to court to be called Murphy or Jones or Smith. Excuse me for answering you this way. That's so all right. If a Chinese person were to say his name was Patrick Murphy, uh, you would look at him like he's insane because uh, Murphy is an Irish name, uh, a European name, or the name that uh, has a Caucasian or, or a white background. And a yellow person, Chinese is a yellow man, and uh, he has nothing to do or no connection whatsoever with the name Murphy. And if it doesn't look proper for a person who is yellow or Chinese to be walking around named Murphy or Jones or Johnson or Bunch or Powell, uh, I think it would be just as improper for a black person or the so-called Negro in this country, as we're taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to walk around with these names. And therefore, he teaches us that during slavery, the same slave master who owned us uh, put his last name on us to denote that we were his property. So that when you see a Negro today who's named Johnson, if you go back in his history, you'll find that he was once his grandfather or one of his forefathers was owned by a white man who was named Johnson. His name is Bunch. His, his grandfather was owned by a I white man point. that was uh, named Bunch. Would you mind telling me what your father's last name was? My father didn't know his last name. My father got his last name from his grandfather, and his grandfather got it from his grandfather, who got it from the slave master. The real names of our people were destroyed well, during slavery. Any, was there any line, uh, any point in, in the uh, genealogy of your family when you did have to use the last name? And if so, what was it? The last name of my forefathers yeah. was taken from them when they were brought to America and made slaves. And then That's the right. name of the slave master was given, which we refuse. We reject that name today. You mean, you, mean you won't even tell me what your father's supposed last name was or gifted last name was? I never acknowledge it whatsoever. Let me ask you about you heard the, that, the so that right there. of Elijah What Muhammad was his first? gifted last name? Because, like in Roots, what the white man gives you, I gave you a name. You're going to use that name. It's a gift. It's a good name. So, Malcolm X, although he was Islamic, now remember, Bivens did used to sit down and go over scripture with him. So I knew he knew a little more than the rest of them. But um, my point with this is that, why did I go to this film? Oh, us being called Gentiles. That's why. De Deuteronomy 2837. Now, the prophecy, now give me the prophecy, Officer Leon. Shatik, give me the prophecy. Give me the prophecy. Verse 37. And no, 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 no. I want Isaiah 44. Shatik Shabazz. 
Malik Shabazz. Now, Malcolm X did change his name officially to Malik L. Shabazz. If I'm wrong, y'all correct me. I don't be following too much. Malik what is it? Malik L. Haj. You don't know. So. What is it? L. Malik Shabazz, right? Haj Malik Shabazz. Oh, that's it. El Haj, Haj Malik, Malik Shabazz. Shabazz. Thank you. That Haj, I forgot. So he did. So now, but I'm going to show y'all where all that stems from. Isaiah 44, Officer Leon. Verse 5. Yes. One shall say. Now let's read the verse above it. Verse 4. 4. And they shall spring up. Now I'm going to give y'all the proper understanding of these verses. Because some of you are confused about these verses. So I'm going to help you all out. Go ahead. And they shall spring up as among the grass. So it's talking about Israel awakening. Go ahead. As willows by the water courses. Uh huh. One shall say, I am the Lord. So there will come a point in time when Israel wakes up, a certain group of Israel, remnants of Israel, will say, I am the Lord. Their understanding will be but so much. They will say, I am the Lord. Go ahead. And another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. The next section, remnant of Israel, will say, I'm going I'm to call myself Jacob, meaning I will have an alias. My name might be Shatik, but I will go by the name of, uh, give me a, a Hebrew name, Azariah. I'll call myself Azariah, but I have an alias. My real name on paper, my gifted name is Shatik, but I'm going to call myself by the name. Read that part again. <laughs> Shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Uh -huh. And another shall subscribe with his hand. This is the next group now, the next remnant. And another shall subscribe with his meaning. He will have the ability he'll, to write with his hand. Go ahead. With his hand unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And surname himself. And surname himself. By the name of Israel. By the name of Israel. So that's just processes of time. Those three groups right there. You all got to sit back and say, well, where do I fit in in that? With the aliases. Where do I fit? Well, you, we need to know that. Right, Claude? We need to know that. The, uh, and you know what's funny? You sisters, let me tell your brother something. Sisters be moving. You know, sisters go, you know what? I want to be that last group that changed the name to Israel. Then she ends up marrying somebody named uh, Tyrone Johnson. Now she got to go take on this clown's name. Now you just left, you sisters, you just left from Israel and went to uh, Johnson. You don't see that's backwards? You brothers don't see something wrong with that? She trying to fulfill prophecy, but she hooks up with a, with a brother, a scared Negro, and says, well, my name is Johnson. You got to call yourself. But I, I'm trying to move it. You taking three steps back with that dude. I'm telling you, y'all, go back to the devil now. Go back. I'm a, I'll end that there. Y'all chew the cut on that. Go back to the devil. Not that devil. You can exile him and finish with him. I just wanted to show you how Islam had more sense than it, or guts than Israelites today. Huh, if, I, if I change my name, I might lose my job. They're going to bother. My parents might disown me. So what? Don't you realize when you change that name to Israel, like that scripture said, you're making a profound statement. You're saying something without having to lift a hand. You, you're a clever Negro. That's an astonishing name. Where'd you get that from? Hmm. He's smarter than the rest. Yes. Bishop, that's a, given, that's a gift name. Yes, that's given the gift. by God. Because that name identifies your race, your national origin, your forefathers. Not Johnson. Not Fernandez. No, you got to roll the R, brother. Fernandez. <laughs> roll the R. Hey, Bishop, what, what's heavy about that is um, with one of my former jobs, where you have to answer the phone, and then you're speaking to the, to the customer, and they say, okay, uh, what's your name? Who am I speaking with? And I'm like, oh, this is Israel. And then they'll pause for a moment. I Israel? Like, who, who is this? I'm, this is Israel speaking, ma'am. And I know in their mind, they're like, the voice is black, right, but right. the name doesn't right, right. matter. Exactly. And it goes to show you that the name it mean, goes a far, far away. Exactly, yes. So, Elder, what you're saying is that that third group of Negroes, the, that's the true vanguards of the that's revolution. The true. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Isaac. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. 
All praises. Where we at, Officer Leo? We, we, the video. Oh, we at the video. Oh, go back to Psalms 50 and 16. <laughs> but unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Now give me the next scripture. I mean next video about God's covenant. You know what I want, right? God's covenant with the Jews. You can X out of that. We're done with him. Moral monsters. Let's watch. We're going to watch the whole video. It's only two minutes. Listen to this guy. And anti-Semitism is a poison that will rob you of the blessing of Christianity. Stop right there. I, I, because one Stop, pause. Anti-Semitism will rob you, what do you say? Of your blessings that you get with Christianity. Anti-Semitism. Do y'all realize there's about, if, correct me if I'm wrong, about nine Shemitic families. Um, about, what, eight? I forgot. But it's about seven, eight, or nine Shemitic families. Blacks and Latinos, we are Shemitic. We descend from Shem. Shem was one of the forefathers of Jacob. Uh, the Arabs are Shemitic. They descend from Abraham's son, Ishmael. Uh, Moab and Ammon descend from Abraham's nephew, Lot. Then you have the Midianites come from Shem. Who else? Help me out here. Y'all know my mind. Oh, Esau. How did I forget the devil? Damn. Esau is Shemitic. He comes from Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Okay, he's Shemitic, all of them. So when they throw this term anti-Semitic, that's a trigger word to, for you to sink. And you're like, oh, I can't get out, I'm trapped. That's, it's a trigger word, like racist. Racist and anti-Semitism are two trigger words to make everybody go, ooh, shame. How can we be anti-Semitic? We are Shemitic. They say, Sem, Sem, no, Shem, Shem. Read it again. I mean, not read. Go back to the beginning. I'm sorry. Go back to the beginning of the devil. Moral monsters. And anti-Semitism is a poison that will rob you of the blessing of Christianity. Because one of the most fundamental prerequisites for God's blessing on your life is your willingness to be a blessing to those he says are important to him or the Jews and Israel. I'm preaching better than you're responding. I mean, most Christians get saved because they want the blessing of God somewhere in their life. They want the blessing of healing. They want the blessing of, I don't know, little peace, little joy, little money, whatever. And so we pray, Lord, bless us. You said the blessing the in the front has right been there. granted me. Where is it? Well, he might ask you the same thing. I wanted you to bless Israel. Where is it? Because that is the first mention of how blessing comes to humanity. The blessing of God. The empowerment to increase and prosper granted by God. And it's not even related to the operation of a covenant. You don't have to be saved. He says you can be, a, you know, you can be out there in the world somewhere. But if you bless Israel, if you bless the seed of Abraham through Isaac, I will bless you. The foundation of all blessing begins for us in the new covenant with a recognition of the current day validity of the old covenant and our determination to acknowledge and bless those that are a part of it. That's the foundation of blessing in the Christian experience. Now let's Anything pause else right is there. Give me, let me go to where he's going. Give me Genesis 12... And verse 3, this is where the devil's getting this from, the moral monster. Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Now that bottom part is where Christian will pull that scripture. What does it mean, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed? What does he prophesy? What is happening? Only two hands, two hands. All right, let's hear you. Shalom, Shalom. brother Ahio. Um, that's making reference to Genesis 49, verse 12. Help me out. Tell me. What are you talking about? The blessings um, that, uh, the blessing that Isaac gave his sons. 
Okay, have a seat. And in thee shall all, because Esau says, see that? And in thee shall all families of the earth be. That means Chinese, Japanese, that's how they use it. That's how they teach it. What is that really talking about? And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. He's saying something. Yes, let me hear you. Only one hand went up. Wow, two. Go ahead. Second Ezra, um, just tell me. Um, when it says, um, all nations are a drop of a bucket, and the no. world will be for our sakes. No, no, have a seat. We appreciate the two of you, though. Let me hear that brother in the back. Don't they go to? The, they don't go to the morning class. Yeah, they're with y'all though. Shalom, shalom. Dag, he's in this class. We got to fix that, brother. Shalom, Bishop. Yeah, shalom. What's your name? Conaniah. Conaniah? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, when he says uh, all nations will be blessed, it's due to the scattering of the Israelites. That's the answer right there. That's the scattered Israelites that are in all. How could you forget Deuteronomy 20? Can we read Deuteronomy 28, He's He's been in the morning class. He oh, okay. Seven. All right. All praises. <laughs> You're going to take that glory quick. <laughs> De Deuteronomy chapter 20, 28, verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there shall be, and there sh thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So now, let's get the priests up for Genesis uh, 12 and 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Write this down. Here is a precept. It's not the only precept, but it is a good precept for Genesis 12 and 3. Acts chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Acts 3, verse 25. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant. So right there, he's identifying who, brothers? Israel, right? Right? Okay, y'all got to talk to me up in here. Come on. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. So he's telling you it's talking about Israelites, Israelites, Israelites. Read. Unto you first, meaning Judah, God have raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you. Now, here's the blessing. Go ahead. And turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So raise your hand. What is the blessing? And in thee shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. What is the blessing? We just read it. If your hand ain't up, that means you're not reading along. Only three hands are up. Way in the back. What is the blessing? Uh, shalom, elders. Um, Who are you? Brother Nashan. Brother Nashan. Right. Uh, the blessing is that the, uh, the scattered, the ten tribes, the northern kingdom can uh, get salvation as well. As the southern kingdom, the two become one. How? They get grafted in. How? Uh, Christ died on the cross. Thank you. That's the answer. That's what, what, what look, brothers, let's read it. Uh, uh, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. That's Christ dying on the cross. Yes, right. That proves it was only done for Israel. It was not done for all nations. Everybody understand that? Yes, wow. Now give me numbers. I think it's 23 or 24, something like that. You know what I want, Liam, right? Numbers 24 and 9. That's it. Numbers 24 and 9. Numbers this continues from Abraham's blessing. Watch this. Numbers chapter 24, verse 9. He couched, he lay down as a lion, and as a great lion, who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. You see that? That's still upon Abraham's seed, the Israelites. It's not talking about all races on the planet getting blessed. It's talking about Israel scattered among all nations being blessed. That's what it's talking about. Does everybody understand that? Whoa! Because a Christian will hit you in the head with them scriptures. And you'll be trying to go back to the devil. Go back. Because I didn't finish with him. 
Go back. Go back to the beginning. And anti Semitism is a poison that will rob you of the blessing of Christianity. Because one of the most fundamental prerequisites for God's blessing on your life is your willingness to be a blessing to those he says are important to him or the Jews and Israel. Stop. I'm preaching better than your response. Stop. So he's saying in order to get a blessing, we have to bless who? The white man in Israel. Give me Revelation 2.9. Give me that. Let's start there. No, no, no. I don't want to start there. Give me Luke 21.24. I'll start there. Then I'll go to Revelation. Luke 21, 24. How are you lining it up? Yeah. Got to line them up. Line you, gotta line them up. up. you know, you got to set a devil up. Yep, yep. <laughs> Man, there's so much witchcraft coming from that dog on pulpit up there. Go ahead. Mm. Luke 21, 24. Ah. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. The real Israelites will fall by the edge of the sword against Rome. And shall be led away captive into all nations. So the real Israelites will go into slavery. Where, brothers? All and nations. All, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. So who's in Jerusalem, brothers? So Christ, the Son of God, he's telling the world, the ones in Jerusalem today are Gentiles. But nobody believes what Christ said. But everybody's a Christian. You're a bunch of liars. That's the Go witchcraft. Yes. Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now give me Revelation 2, 9, 3, 9. Let's Revelation. get some more. You got to kill a devil. You got to stomp him out. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh -huh. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. So the real Israelites would be an oppressed people. But we would be rich in the context that all the blessings in the Bible pertain to us. Go ahead. But thou art rich. That's why he says that. Go ahead. And I know the blasphemy. Of them which say they are Jews. That's the white man in Jerusalem today. And are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Thank you, Jesus. Now give me Revelation 3, 9. Say, hey, hallelujah, amen. Behold, <laughs> behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Mm. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Now give me Ezekiel 36, 5. You just got to line them up. You got to line them up. Is it 36.5, Liam, yep. I want? Um, About yep. Idumia. Yep. Yes, sir. It's Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, God, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia. Idumia is another word for what, brothers? Edom. Go ahead. Which have appointed my land into their possession. Boom. That's the same thing That's Christ right said there. in Luke 21, 24. They're giving you their national or biblical name there. The I do means, which is Esau, which is Edom. So, this witchcraft that we're under, they call Christianity, these moral monsters. They say in order for you to get a blessings, a blessing, you got to bless the white man in Israel. You got to bless the land of Israel over there with them in it. No. The blessing only comes when they bless us, our people. And believe it or not, brothers and sisters, nobody's blessing us. That's why they call us niggers and spicks and all kind of uh, proverbs and bywords. Nobody blesses us. But I give the United Negro College Fund money. Mm. You're not blessing the Israelites. You're blessing the United Negro College Fund. Right. That's not Israel. To continue making Negroes. Right. They want to keep making Negroes. Yeah, you remember their kidnapper when their storm happened in Haiti. They came to right. kidnap our kids. Give me, um, um, what do I want? Give me what I want. Go back. Go back to Psalms 50. No, go back to Psalms 50. Psalms 50, verse 16. Wait a minute. Oh, I just thought about something. Somebody right now may be thinking, surely the nations, there's some nations that love us. Matthew 24, you know what I want, 9 and 10. Surely some nations love us. Really? Okay, let's see what the Savior said. Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Now what we wanted, we're, read that bottom part again. And, 
and ye shall be hated of all nations. Remember from the promise said, blessed is he that blesses you. And cur I can't quote. And cursed is he that curses you. The Bible says all nations hate us. There's going to be no blessings on the nations. You hear that, Miss Ann? You Christian apologists, you hear that? I want you to hear it good. There's going to be no blessings on you. So now, back to Psalms 50. So now we got some, some understanding with Psalms, the 50th chapter, in verse 16. Let's read it again, Officer Leon. Psalms, chapter 50, verse 16. But unto the wicked God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Because they always pick up a Bible, and they got the statutes of God in their mouth. Go ahead. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy They're mouth. They're always talking about the new covenant. The new covenant. Go ahead. Seeing thou hatest instruction. The Bible says, and you know, some of them take hold of the old covenant. Some of them take hold of the new covenant. But it says, seeing thou what? Hatest instruction. Because you know what one, one Edomite, one moral monster said to me one day. He says, surely God will bless the Jewish people in Israel. I said, really? He says, don't they keep Torah? Don't they keep law? I said, really? I said, doesn't the Torah teach thou shalt not bear false witness against your neighbor? He goes, yes. I said, so who do they say we are and who do they say they are? They lie. No blessings for them at all. They're the biggest liars on the planet Earth. We. Seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. Yeah, they, they cast God's word behind them like in the court system. They'll take out the Bible and say, put your hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. And then you'll either affirm yea or nay. Then they take the Bible and put it underneath everything. Then they judge you according to their penal law. They don't judge you out of the Bible. They judge you according to the penal law of that state. Go ahead. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Excuse me, verse 18. When thou sawest a thief. When thou, listen to this. When thou sawest a thief. Then thou consentest with him. Then thou consentest with him. Can you pull up a picture of uh, Cristobal Colon, please? Cristobal Colon. I know some of you Puerto Ricans. You're going to be marching in the parade. Did it already pass already? It passed, right? You're going to be on Fifth Avenue screaming, throwing uh, confetti and all kind of stuff. Waving that flag. You know, when we went to PR, this guy's image is throughout the island. Everywhere. Read verse 18 for us again, Officer Leon. When thou sawest a thief. When you saw Christopher Columbus. Then thou consentest with him. Then you consent with him. And has been partaker with adulterers. And has been partaker with. This is why you can never change the educational system to stop teaching this, this genocidal maniac, because that's what he is. Stop teaching that he discovered America. They will never stop that. Because one of the Columbus uh, statements that he made, he that owns the gold. What did he say? Uh, has, has everything that he could want in his life. Something like In that. other words, he that owns the gold has the power. power. That is America's theme, too. That when God we trust, gold, oil, and drugs. That was in a movie. It's not a scripture. But uh, I said, oh, that's funny. It's clever. But um, they admire this man. This man was a genocidal maniac. He enslaved the people. He murdered the people. He stole the land, the wealth. That's what it means in verse 18. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consentest with him and has been partaker with adulterers. Because him and his men, they did much adultery on the island of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, so forth and so on. Why don't they put a statue of Adolf Hitler out there? Why don't they put Adolf Hitler? Because he did more killing than Adolf Hitler. Anti-Semite! That's what they'll say to you. What are you going to say, y'all? What's up? Go ahead. You got the quote? Read it. Uh, this is this is what was written in Christopher Columbus's log. It says, "Gold is the most precious of all commodities. Gold constitutes treasure, and he who possesses it has all he needs in this world." So, in other words, he that owns the gold has the power. Right. 
I sum it up in Negro terms. Yes. <laughs> That's what the end of poverty is all about. That's right. what these different programs are about. Y'all better look, how many of you have seen the end of poverty? Raise your hand. Dang, a lot. It's free on YouTube. I would adjure all of you to look at that. It's a documentary. It is a documentary. Uh, Officer Liam, read on. Oh, yeah. Hold Bishop, on. go back. Uh, we the, the when they say you you hate instruction. Verse seventeen, seeing thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee, because they go all the way down to Cain, because what God tell Cain, He told Cain, hey. Uh, uh, God tell Cain, hey, listen, this is an instruction. If you do well, did not well will come to thee. If you do evil, would not evil come to thee. Let's go down all the way to Cain line, all the way to the Edomite you see today. They're here instruction. They're not here to teach you none about God's laws. That's not their job. This is the job of the prophet to come back and bring you back to your common sense. It's not the job of the white man. Any nation, that's not their job. Exactly. Back to Psalms 50, you're in verse 19 and 20. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Now listen good to this. Thou givest thy mouth to evil. Go ahead. And thy tongue frameth deceit. And your tongue frameth deceit. Go ahead. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Who was Esau's brother? Jacob. Go ahead. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. How do they slander us? Let me see. Who's thinking? How do they slander us? Only two hands. Uh, let me hear in, in the center. I saw, yeah, right there. How do they slander us? Um, Brother Adam. Brother Adam. Um, they slander us by, they'll push negative images of us in the news. Like if one person commits a crime, then they'll, they'll kind of push that propaganda against us to paint us in a certain image. Well, that's good. So you see where it says, thou, frame, thou givest thy mouth to evil, thy tongue frameth deceit. The, the mouth and tongue of the white man is called what, brothers? The media. The media. G yes, oh, Abiel? It's called The End of Poverty. It's a documentary on YouTube. Yeah, just put that up. It'll pop up. Right. I want the next video. Uh, it's called Tim Weiss. Now, this is the only Edomite that I give a few accolades to, but I don't trust him. Tim Weiss. Uh... We want to start, listen good, you know, start at 12 minutes and, tw and 7 seconds, 12.07, and we're only going to 15.36. Right there, just start right there. I want you all to listen to what he says about the media. Now, we're going here because it says, Thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. So the question was, how do they slander us? What is their mouth and their tongue? It's their media. Listen to what he says. I mean, if you think about the history of law enforcement, most white Americans have no understanding of the police as a weapon used against black and brown bodies. But if you look at the history, that has been the way ever since uh, slave codes, ever since the black codes post-emancipation, ever since slave patrols in the 1700s, ever since, uh, uh, you know, the way there were white on black race riots, at least 30 white on black race riots in the early part of the 20th century that cops actively participated in. How many white folks, for that matter, how many black folks grew up knowing that stuff? It wasn't in our school, so unless you had a parent that taught you or you had mentors who taught you about that, you wouldn't have known it. So I think, in a way, I use the analogy of the, of the film The Matrix, right, where you could take the blue pill or the red pill. You take the blue pill, you go back to sleep, you remain oblivious to what's happening. You take the red pill, you have enlightenment, and as Lawrence Fishburne says in that, in that movie, I'll take you down the rabbit hole and show you how deep it goes. In a way, to be white in America has been to be walking around with the IV drip with the blue pill going through it every day of your life, not even knowing that you're walking around with it. And then when black and brown folks come out, they're taking the red pill because they don't have a lot of choice. They're like, don't you see the racism? And the blue pill folks were like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. So I think we have to confront that denial, uh, number one. And the second thing we got to do is we have to acknowledge this thing is systemic. I think the reason white folks get defensive about the conversation is if you say we're going to talk about racism, white Americans think you're getting ready to call them racist. And that's not what we're not talking about individual races. I, for one, don't care if Darren Wilson is a racist. What I care about is a culture of policing that engenders the abuse of black and brown people, even among cops 
who are not bigots. Like, he could be a Boy Scout. He could be a great guy. He, you know, they had this conversation when George Zimmerman killed Trayvon. And I realized George Zimmerman, technically a Latino, but pretty white identified in terms of his character and who he hangs out with and all that. Here's a guy, they said, well, he's not a racist. He dated a black girl, took her to prom, mentored black children. It doesn't matter because he is internalizing the same messages from the media, from the schools that we all are. So we don't have to feel what are those guilty. Messages? Those messages are that black men are dangerous because if you look at the news, there have been studies on this. Local news overrepresents black folks as perpetrators overrepresents white folks as victims. So the message that gets sent is they're dangerous and specifically to you. They are not only bad people, they're going to hurt you. So therefore, we want to keep them on that side of town. We want to keep their children in those schools over there. We don't want to work around them. We don't want to live around them, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that message comes through loud and clear in the way that media uh, represents people of color. You know, whenever we, uh, thinking about uh, Tamir Rice, the 12 year old child that was shot in Cleveland by police, when that happened, what did they do? The first news story in Cleveland that made a big splash was about Tamir Rice's parents and the history of domestic abuse and criminality among his parents, not about the cop that killed him. We talk worse about black victims than we do white killers. What did we say about Ted Bundy? Oh, he was so smart and he was so quiet and he always seemed so nice. Every time one of these white boys goes and shoots up a school, what did we say? We had no idea he was going to do this. So we talk better. We have more sympathy for white folks who commit mass murder, bury bodies under the house, cook them up in a soup pot and eat them, right? Then we do black folks who were killed by police. We start digging for every bad thing they ever did. We want to know if they had a juvenile record. We want to know if they'd ever been arrested. That's what the media does. And until that changes, I'm afraid white folks will stay in denial and it'll be very hard for us to move forward, whether we're talking about cops or just average everyday folks. We have a very well, there you go. diverse view. Well, there you go. Well, all righty then. The white man, your friend, has broken it down to you. They have more sympathy for white killers, for Jeffrey Dahmer, who killed black people and ate their bodies, put their heads in refrigerators. He was so smart and handsome. Or Ted Bundy. Look at him. He's so wonderful. How could he be like this? But you and I, who get shot in the street, oh, look, he was a, he smoked weed. He smoked weed! Stop. Yeah! What's that movie? Uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's what they do with us. That's how they roll. That's how they get down. Right. Image is everything. So the image for us has to be that we are destitute, downtrodden. We ain't nothing. Go ahead. You remember that scripture in Isaiah you pull out? Really, our people been brainwashed. Our people been dead. They're like unconscious. Our people been unwise, unlearned. Yeah, when it gets down to us coming out in these streets teaching our people, we have to have compassion. You know what is the compassion we're going to have? We're dealing with the most destroyed and dangerous people. You understand? Who have not learned about themselves and have not learned about their own identity. Who have brainwashed by the oppressor. You understand? The, our teaching has to get way better. That's why this class is very important, man, to know that what we're facing in these streets. I like the analogy that he used in terms of, of what he said that the media does. To He was actually talking about his people, but our people suffer from it as well. He said that, that the people walk around, it's, it's, it is as if they have an IV of the blue pill dripping into their veins that keep them stupid. That's basically what he's saying. Keep them in a television tube. You mentioned about it earlier in the class. He said about people's uh, mind is captivated. By, I can't remember the word you used, but captivated in the tube, captivated in the television. Their mind is television. And that's what he was uh, making reference to with the uh, IV and the blue pill, keeping the people in a basic uh, intellectual oblivion. They don't know what the hell's going on. Exactly. So Christians, as I said, are moral monsters. It's a general term that gives the rhetoric, they give the rhetoric of godliness but are the most ruthless and diabolical people on earth. Just check it out. What I'm saying is not based on my personal feelings, but it's based upon historical facts. Give me Psalms 55 and 21 for your moral monsters. Psalms chapter 55, verse 21. Who keeps cutting the lights off? Oh, something, we have a short over there? Okay. Go ahead. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. This is your moral monster. 
The words of his mouth are smoother than butter. butter. He says all the right things to ease you, to make you come feel comfortable. That's what he did with the American Indians. That's what he did with our people after the abolishment of slavery. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. Do you hear that? But war was in his heart. Let us give you blankets for the winter, Mr. Indian. Let's give you blankets to help warm you and your children. Meanwhile, the blankets are filled with smallpox and all manner of bacteria. Then he comes with the Jesuit priests. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, I love you. Jesus loves you. Put down your weapons. Okay, okay. I love you. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Kill every one of them. You get the chance. That's what they did. Check out the history. I'm not making it up. I'm doing it in a humorous form, but it's a reality. It's been our reality. Read it again. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. When you look at your dollar bill, can you pull eight? Dollar bill. Um, the national symbol with the eagle. The white man's telling you his character on the money in your pocket. But we are like, remember the Bible says, we're like blind people groping at noonday. The white man will put it out there. Yep. You see in the, the, the right talon of the eagle, there's an olive branch which represents what, brothers? Peace. And the other talon, arrows, represents war. So we're reading to you scriptural evidence. Now we're showing it to you. So if you decide to go back to sleep, shame on you. Go to sleep and die. We can't help you. <laughs> no, he's my friend. He's my friend. Okay, bye-bye. Read it again. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Yet were they drawn swords. Let's give you more proof. First Maccabees 129. E pluribus unum, out of many, one. Then you got the hexagram. That's for another lesson above his head. That's America and Israel, a little satellite of America. Uh, read that. First Maccabees 1, 29 and 30. First listen Maccabees, good, listen good. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 29. And after two years, and after two years fully expired, the king sent his chief collector of tribute unto the cities of Judah. Listen good. Who came unto Jerusalem with a great multitude and spake peaceable words unto them. And spake peaceable words unto them. But all was deceit. All their words was deceit, the Bible says. Was that it? For when they had given him credence, he fell suddenly upon the city and smote it very sore and destroyed much people of Israel. You see that? You see that? Now give me the next one, Daniel 8, 25. We're going to let the Bible speak for itself. Because sometimes, oh, y'all just saying that. Now, we're, we're reading the scriptures to you, oh, Christian. Read that. Daniel 8, 25. And through his policy, uh -oh. also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Uh -huh. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And by peace shall... And by, and by peace. Peace shall destroy many. Shall what? Sh destroy many. And by peace shall destroy many. Yes, Reuben. And by peace shall destroy. See, y'all don't know this Edomite. This Edomite that many of you love. Yes, what you got? In, in Esau's Pledge of Allegiance, towards the end, he say, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. But his history proves otherwise that he's a liar. Exactly. And in school, they teach that. They teach you to stand up and pledge allegiance to that flag. Exactly. And you know that damn, speaking of that Star Spangled Banner, the fourth stanza, they always leave out that talks about the wretched slaves. If, we, if you ever stand up for that, you know my daughter graduated the other day. I was waiting to see if she I was waiting to see if my wife started. I was going to curse them out in front of everybody. My mother-in-law, her wicked mind, she stood up. God, I don't even know the Star Spangled Banner. I don't know how it go. She stood up, hold Jehovah Witness self. I wanted to hit her with a watermelon. 
<laughs> the Edomites next to me is looking down at me mad as hell. I know they was. I was waiting for them to say something. Say, say something. I'll curse you out right now. <laughs> Go from there. Give me a second as just 1142. And by peace destroy many. Because, for example, you may think foreign aid, you know America gives, America and the European Union gives millions of dollars to countries on earth for their economy. You might think that is a generous thing. Do you know that, let's say they give you a million dollars for your economy, you have to pay back too? You're in, you are, that's the, that is neo-colonialism. They give you money, that's what scripture says, gift to store of the heart. When they give you that money, that foreign aid, they dictate your politics. They dictate who's in it. That's why I tell you, look at that movie, uh, Patrice Lumumba. Look at it. They show you in there what they do, what Belgium did over there in the Congo. Foreign aid is a trap. It may appear on the outside that it is beneficial to you, but it's not. It traps you. You become a servant to tribute with America and their allies. Read that. Second Ezra 11 and 42. For thou hast afflicted the meek. You see that? The white man has afflicted the meek. America has afflicted the meek. Come on. Thou hast hurt the peaceable. See that? Thou hast hurt the peaceable. Who is this talking about? What's the so-called American Indians, the tribe of Gad, Reuben, and Issachar. Read it again from the top. For thou hast afflicted the meek. Thou hast hurt the peaceable. Thou hast loved liars. Uh-oh. Thou hast what? Loved liars. Do they love Columbus, brothers? They has loved liars. Go ahead. And destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. They destroyed the homes and houses of them that brought forth fruit. That's why in Puerto Rico is very little evidence of the history of Puerto Rico over there. They just, Columbus had that stuff wiped out. Ponce de Leon and them. Wipe it down. Even in uh, Hispaniola, Santo Domingo. Very little evidence of the way they lived their culture. The white man destroyed it. Those first two islands, Hispaniola and Puerto Rico, they destroyed the majority of everything there. Read that again. For thou hast afflicted the meek, thou hast hurt the peaceable, thou hast loved liars, and destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit, and has cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. Because the quote-unquote Indians did the white man no harm. They helped them when you read the history. The white man said, kill them all. And the rest make slaves in Spain and Portugal. That's what they did for your Christian. And they, were, they said we claim this in the name of white Jesus. That's what they did. Now, but I, we can't stress it. We just got to know about it to help enlighten the minds of our people. But watch what God says in Psalms 50, 21 and 22. Let me see what time it is. 1949, Psalms 8. Go ahead. Psalms 50. This is what the Lord says about us. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 21. This is why I don't stress it, I don't worry. That's why you can't stress or worry. Watch this. These things hast thou done. All the evil that the white man has done. Go ahead. And I kept silence. God stayed quiet. That's why some people say, how come if there's a God, he let all this evil happen? The prophecy says he stayed, the Lord will stay quiet when he sees all the evil in the earth. Go ahead. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such and one as thyself. The white man did so much evil. They thought surely God is a white man. He's not punished us at all. So they set up images of God and Christ and the angels as Caucasians. Go ahead. But I will reprove but them. But there's coming a time where the Lord will reprove them. Watch this. And set them in order before thine eyes. And set the Israelites in order before their eyes eyes that's what you see what y'all see in this room right here is the fulfilling of the prophecy what you see online on youtube with all israel our people waking up day by day by day by day read that part again but i will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes that's, we're living prophecy brothers and sisters we are living prophecy that's why don't worry what the white the evil of white man's doing we can't stop him we can't do nothing right now until the Lord comes and gives us that power. Until that day, we got to sit back and relax. You, you know what, really, Dad? We did, we did, we did it again. But I will reprove thee uh -huh. and set them in order before thine eyes. It's nothing he can do about it because the prophecy went out. All their injury already guide up to make this thing happen. 
Same way Moses prophesied about Deuteronomy 28. Angel already set it up. We was going to go to that. Same way that God put the prophecy out here. Angel already set up. There's nothing the white man can do about it. Israel will wake up. The 12 tribe will come back to the Mosai. Then we will rule the earth again. In That's Washington. right. <laughs> Give me Isaiah 59. That's because you know when you come in the truth as a young man, you hear the atrocities and you get angry and you don't know how to deal in society. But be at peace in society. Having that mindset, hey, this white man is my enemy, but in the end, I'm going to overcome. That's how your mind got to be. So that way you don't go crazy. Because when you sit down and study and read and you're like, yo, this is an evil devil. And you might want to go out and smack somebody, but don't do that. Don't do that. Read that, Officer Leon. What verse, Bishop? One. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. We all here listening must understand that. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save us, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear our prayers. The most I can save us overnight, he hears us daily. Read. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. This is why Christ said, um, in Matthew 5, 17, think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy the law or the prophets, but to fulfill. He fulfilled the law of sacrifice. So the law and the prophets are in full effect. Give me that precept. Hold that. Second Ezra uh, 7 and 6, where it says the law is in full force. You know what I want, Liam? No, sir. Oh, God. Hold on. It says the law is in full force. Oh, 2nd Ezra 10, 37. I'm sorry. 9, 37. 9, 9, 37. 2nd Ezra, yep. Chapter 9, verse 37. Notwithstanding, the law perisheth not, but remaineth in his force. You see that? So the law is in full effect. So for you to be in Christianity thinking the law is done, you're an idiot. You're a fool. What do you think God's going to judge everyone on? On what scale if the law is done away with? Where's your mind? Go back to Isaiah 59, please. It's in a microwave. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So that is the problem we must reveal to our people. That's the reason the Lord is not saving us overnight. That's the reason he's not uh, stepping out on our prayers because of our iniquities, meaning our sins. We got to learn the commandments, learn what our individual sins are, and fight to overcome. Read. For your hands are defiled with blood. Look at all the crime amongst our people. Black on black crime. We hate each other. We shoot each other. Some gangs have gotten to the they're shooting little children. Go ahead. And your fingers with iniquity. Mm -hmm. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perversity. Your lips have spoken Christianity. Your tongue hath muttered Christianity. <laughs> because that's what the lies and the perverseness is. It's Christianity, for an example. That also includes democracy and all these other things. But in Christianity, what do they teach us? The law is done away with. Come as you are. God loves us all. Everyone. No judgment. We judge no one. You're transgendered. Come as you are. No! No, no. You cut your rod off, go home. Go home and repent. Here go a transgender so I want to come to the school. No. You have to fix yourself. Stop taking the hormones. I'm being serious. I'm being real. Because there was a sister that wrote us. She took so much hormone, she has no breasts now. She has carried herself like, listen, sis, you can't come like that. For that, no, for her, to come like that, it will cause what, brothers? Confusion. Stop taking the hormones. Grow the breastuses back. And you brothers, you brothers out there that got breastuses, you know when I was a kid, I couldn't say titties. Excuse my language, I'm sorry. I used to get beat. So me and my younger brother, we had to make up words. We used to call them nitty cons. Our mother didn't know what they were. We go, look at those nitty cons. We had to make words so we didn't get beat. So anyway... <laughs> You brothers with breasts, I ain't talking about you fat brothers with man boobs. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about brothers with taking estrogen and you're lactating. Stop. Stop it. You got to stop. That's evil. It's going to cause confusion. 
Stay home, watch online, get your body back in order again. It'll cause confusion. Understand? I hope, did everybody understand what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be mean spirit. I'm not. But you got to think about it. It will cause so much problems in here. Because you know a brother, here come, the, here come the dude looking like a woman. He going to sit over there. Then you're going to have one of these brothers looking over there talking about that might be the one. <laughs> then you're going to get the surprise of your life. <laughs> I'm sorry. So they got to stay home. I'm sorry. We do love our brothers and sisters who are. So what the hell am I supposed to do with that? I already got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we do love our people who are right now part of that LGBT community, but they must repent. The message is for those of us in any kind of sin, repentance must be applied to our lives. Everybody understand that? Okay. Where we at, Officer Liam? Verse 4. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. Now, you might be saying right now, that's not true. Because Black Lives Matter, they do call for justice. They're out there marching every time. They call for justice and they plead for truth. No, they don't. I'm going to tell you, no, they don't. Think about all the black marchers, black and Latinos that march for justice. Listen to their speech. I wish you could, Enoch. I don't know what a video is. There's a video with Mike. What's the brother that was? Eric Gardner. His mother got on stage, and we do love them. But she made a statement. It was either the mother or the wife. She said, who's going to uh, play Santa Claus for my kids? Who's going to sit at the table on Thanksgiving? That was, the wife. that was the wife. So all people that you think plead for justice, no. They plead for assimilation. They plead to be equal with the white man. You found it? You sure that's it? Please. I'll, I don't want to be sitting here for 20 minutes. It ain't the video. Okay. Hell no. The time for remorse would have been when my husband was yelling to breathe. That would have been the time for him to show some type of remorse or some type of care for another human being's life. When he was screaming 11 times that he can't breathe. So there's nothing that him or his prayers or anything else would make me feel any different. No, I don't accept his apology. No, I could care less about his condolences. No, I could care less. He's still working. He's still getting a paycheck. He's still feeding his kids. And my husband is six feet under. And I'm looking for a way to feed my kids now. Anyone else? You know, All who, right, thank who, you very who's much. Who's going to play Santa Claus for my grandkids this year? Because he played Santa Claus for my grandkids. Who's going to do that now? So my point with this pleading for justice, notice what she says. She wants that, that, that American dream of Christmas, holiday. These are all white supremacist holidays. But our people love that stuff. Read that again, Officer Liam. This is what the Bible is talking about. None call it for justice. Nobody calls for justice. Listen good to what I'm about to say. If you want justice, think about justice just for a moment. The word justice should never come out of a white man or woman's mouth. They should never utter the word. Why? In order for justice, let me get my words right. Okay, if I steal from you, Justice would be to return it, right? Okay. Did the white man steal this country? That means they would have to return it. Did the white man kill hundreds of millions of our people? Justice. Do you really want justice? Our people that say they want justice, they don't want... Give me... Hold that. Officer Liam, Exodus 21. Here's the law. Here, this is why Christians say, don't read the Old Testament. Watch. Except for tithing. Except for the law and tithe. Is it 2116, Liam? And they got that wrong. Exodus 21, verse 16. This is for all you Christians that love God. And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Justice. That is justice. This is why, go back now to Isaiah. This is why the Lord says in Isaiah 59, 4, read it again. None calleth for justice. Nobody really wants justice in the earth. We want an appeasement. We want a reparation, but we really don't want true justice. Go ahead. 
nor any pleadeth for truth. Nobody pleads for truth. Our people don't plead the truth. They will never plead the truth that the Bible's speaking of. Go ahead. They trust in vanity. You see that? They trust in vanity means lies, wickedness. Go ahead. And speak lies. Go ahead. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. You see that? That's what our people, blacks and Latinos, the 12 tribes of Israel, God is calling it to our face of how we really are. Okay, give me from there. Jump down the same book. Go to verse 9 through 14. Verse 9. Therefore is judgment far from us. So because of this, judgment, according to God, is far from our people. Go ahead. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither doth justice overtake us. Neither doth justice overtake us. Come on. We wait for light. We sit around and wait for light. Surely the white man's going to judge us right. You are pleading for morality from an immoral man. Go ahead. But behold obscurity. Right. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity. Confusion, in other words. Go ahead. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We want the sun to shine in our lives, but it's only darkness. That's what Isaiah is revealing. Go ahead. We grope for the wall like the blind, uh -huh. and we grope as if we had no eyes. We act like we got no eyes. I just want justice for my son that was killed, but I don't want justice for my people as a nation. No, no, not that. No, no, God, Jesus. No, not that. Just for my boy. The Lord says, no, when I bring justice, I'm bringing total justice. <laughs> Go ahead. We stumble at noonday uh -huh. as in the night. We stumble at noonday. As in at noonday, the sun is brightest. It's at its zenith, at its peak. And the Bible says we're stumbling like we're in the dark. Because we see all the evil. We see it crystal clear. But we won't call it to its face. And we stumble in, in our lives. Go ahead. We are in desolate places as dead we're, men we're like dead men dead people watch this next verse we roar we roar all like bears <laughs> <laughs> meaning we cry and that's what he's talking about we all roar like bears you see injustice <laughs> go ahead and mourn saw like doves <laughs> He's talking about our emotional state of mind right. when we see injustice. That's right. Go ahead. We look for judgment, but there is none. We look for proper judgment, there's none. No conviction. No conviction. No conviction. Go ahead. For salvation, but it is far off then from us. Then we said we want the Lord to come, but it said it's far from us. Why? Because we walk in lies. Read. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. And the Lord is constantly telling us why salvation is far from us. Why we don't receive true justice and judgment. For our, the word for me is because. Because our transgressions are multiplied before thee. Read. And our sins testify against us. Mm -hmm. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them. We all know, we all know our dirt. We all know our evil thoughts. That's why when you teach on the street, you brothers know that teach on the street. When you bring a certain scripture, you see the people that get caught. Oh, shoot. Yeah. yeah. Yo, how'd you know that? Yeah, tell me more about that. They know what they're guilty of when they hear. That's why Christ says, show my people their transgressions. Our job is to teach God's commandments. Let the guilty parties admit they're the guilty ones and confess and repent. That's the duty. That's their job. Go ahead. In transgressing and lying against the Lord. You see what we do? In transgressing and lying against the Lord. Who's going to play Santa Claus for my children? That's transgressing and lying against the Lord. Go ahead. And departing away from our God. And departing away from our God. Go ahead. Speaking oppression and revolt. You see that? Speaking oppression and revolt. Democracy is oppression. The penal system, this is an oppressive system. Christianity is an oppressive system, but it says we speak oppression and revolt. Revolt against what? Revolt against God's laws. I want the oppressive system. That's what I want. I don't want that Bible. Give me democracy. Give me Christianity. Give me white man Jesus, but don't dare give me the Bible. Read. Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. You see how we roll as a people? Conceiving and uttering from the heart. Meaning from the lowest depth of your mind, we utter words of falsehood. Go ahead. And judgment is turned away backwards. You see, judgment is turned away 
backward. No conviction. No conviction. No conviction. I'm going to sue the government for poisoning the water in Flint, Michigan. You can't sue the government. Bam. Now what? Now what? <laughs> we shall overcome. And a white man throwing watermelon, hitting us upside the head. Dumb niggas. Think, see with your eyes, read the scriptures. Go ahead. And justice standeth afar off. And justice standeth afar off. Go ahead. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity. And equity. And equity cannot enter. Read. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil. And he that repents of his sins. Maketh himself a prey. You make yourself a target. We're all targets. When we repent and speak the words of the Lord, you are a target. You make yourself a prey. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again... Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.